How you doing, everybody? Welcome back to the third and final segment of the Cajun Conservative Show today. And I am excited to announce we have Mr. Mike Francis. He is a public service. He's part of the Public Service Commissioner, but he's also running for Secretary of State of the great state of Louisiana. Mr. Mike, welcome to the Cajun Conservative Show. How you doing, sir? Well, it's good to be here with you. Uh, I'm really anxious to uh, do your program and uh, appreciate what you do. Get, getting on the air out there to uh, tell everybody about what a conservative is. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got to do that because, uh, unfortunately, we have a lot of people that uh, that are uh, that are good actors. They say they're conservative, but uh, unfortunately, if you pull back the cover, they're not really conservative at all. They're just a rhino because that's the only way they can win is to have a Republican name. <laughs> no, it's, you know, uh, 30 years ago when I first started in the Republican Party, uh, things were really, there weren't many Republicans then that uh, just just for real Republicans. Now you everybody's Republicans, you got a lot of rhinos. Uh, and and, and it's, sad, it's sad that we, we've come to that point to where we, we don't know what a true conservative is no more. And it, uh, but hey, that's okay. They got your friendly neighborhood Cajun conservative here telling them how to do it. Well, thank you for doing that. I'm, you're in my corner. I'm in your corner. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, Mr. Mike, uh, first off, you know, you, you said you've been in politics uh, for a little while. Um, you know, wh- why are you running for secretary of state? Why why you chose now to take the helm and to to try to run for that particular office here in the state of Louisiana? Well, this all came about because of the threat of going back to paper ballots during the election. So there were some... Some people in Louisiana thought that uh, our elections were, were being stolen from us and that we needed to go back to the paper ballot, something that we did back years ago. Uh, after I talked to some of the, some of the clerks and board and the register of voters, uh, I came to find out another complete uh, answer for that. And none of them were in favor of the paper ballot. So I decided to uh, get in the race and uh, if I could stand up against, you know, that idea. And uh, a few weeks after I got into the race, the uh, Secretary of State decided he's going to get out. So he's not running for re-election. So it's an open seat. And uh, my whole agenda is about uh, a good, safe, uh, fair election without any fraud. And we always have people trying to steal our votes. And I'm there too. I'm going to get in there and make sure we stop that. It's um, so, so with that being said, do you, do you feel that elections in Louisiana really ain't up to par at where it could be at uh, going further? Well, I, you know, I'm I'm from the real business world. We we look at things real simple and straight, but not a lot of fancy words. Uh, what I would say is. If it's not broke, don't fix it. And uh, Louisiana has one of the best election systems in America. Uh, unlike some of the other states who uh, have been accused of fraud and misdoing, Louisiana really hasn't had that kind of reputation. We really do pretty pretty good with our elections. And uh, so I want to run to stop some of these uh, some of these ideas about going back to the. Uh, what I call World War II politics and ways we do things uh, with the paper ballot. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to have an open open mind and transparent. Listen to any anyone's ideas about what they would think about changing the election. But uh, I think we have a good system, and I want to just go in and look at it, see if I can't try to make it a little better. But if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah, and uh, Mr. Kyle Ardwin, and we, I, we've I've had some people that disagreed with me. Uh, I feel Mr. Kyle has done the best of his ability. He was a pretty good Secretary of State. Um, you hear stories of uh, of his conduct and of things like that. But like you said, you, you hear a lot of people say when they when they talk about elections that that that's the one of the things they worried about is the vote and 
there's a lot of people that say, well, look, we, we haven't done it right in the last couple of years. Uh, one of your uh, opponents uh, goes on the road and they show demonstrations of how uh, in their in their view that votes could be be switched and all that stuff um and what uh they they're they're advocating for paper ballots um i, I think i think cal has done a good job going your uh, predecessor has go, uh, did pretty well and you know like you said i i just a lot of experts say we have a good voting system here in louisiana well and, and i agree the uh there's an organization called the heritage foundation it uh, kind of evaluates uh, each one of the states and how they get the vote out. A lot of people don't realize that each state votes differently. Uh, some of these states that we've been seriously accused of fraud, uh, they've taken several days to get the uh, vote county in uh, Louisiana. Usually we have our, our numbers in by midnight and uh there's no proof, real proof anywhere that we have a, a failed system and we have problem with our vote. So, so also now I got a question on that because th there is a lot of people that are worried because we've, we've had national spotlights on a few of our elections in the last couple of years and just not Louisiana, but also all over the nation. Um, are you hearing concerns when you talk to people about how can we make sure our vote is most is secure the most secure thing ever in this uh in, in this upcoming election because we do have a big election we have a governor's election we have your race we have a lieutenant governor we have a lot of big uh, races coming up how do you uh re-secure the citizens of louisiana that we're not going to get mixed up in all this you know or our vote is it, it, it's not going to count, or our vote is not secure. Well, I'm, my opinion of that is uh, the last election we had for president, uh, Donald Trump got almost sixty percent of the vote here. Uh, there's no proof of any kind of fraud in the election that we had, and I don't see having a problem with this next election. I really don't. So, so, so we're, we're, we're pretty good in, in your view of what was going on coming forward. Yes. I don't want you to, we don't, don't compare us to some of these other states who uh, have great accusations of fraud. Uh, if you look at a lot of those states who have been accused of fraud, we still don't have any any absolute proof that uh, they were wrong doing. So, so, so you, you, so I know it's probably states you're talking like Arizona, Nevada. There, it's not, it's not as bad as that going forward there. No, I think one of the problems uh, we have uh, this vote gathering, uh, where these people go into the nursing homes and take advantage of the people who don't don't know what who to vote for at all. Uh, we don't have a big problem with that here in Louisiana. I think we could possibly uh, pass a, some laws to, to tighten that up a little bit to, to make sure that uh, there's no fraud. Uh, that'd be one thing I want to really look into. And also, uh, I want to make it easier for the elderly to vote and to not be taken advantage of. So, so go, going on that note, um, we, we, you know, in 2020 with the COVID-19, and everything like that one of the one of the big pushes by the left and some conservatives i say some conservatives some that were on the right or the left that call themselves conservatives uh was these you know mail these mail drop boxes uh making it easier on us we we have a pretty good system right now of absentee ballots um you gotta register for them like my elderly grandmother She's already on the rolls. She, uh, roll. she gets them every time an election because she can't make it to the polls no more. Um, you said you want to try to make it easier for the elderly. How do you make it more easier than them getting ballots and mailing them back in? Well, I want to tell you this. Uh, as a leader and one who would uh, try to make things better, I'm going to get with the registrar of voters and those people who work in the polls, along with the clerks of court. And uh, I'm going to ask them. They're the ones who count the vote, who, who do the work. 
ask him what are their what are good ideas that they may want to have the legislature pass laws to make it better. So uh, I'm not going to sit here as a know-it-all politician and tell you, uh, you know, some fancy words of what we need to do to change things. So uh, I just I think we all know that there may be some ways that we could uh, to make it a little easier for our elderly. Awesome, awesome. Uh, so, Mr. Francis, you know, we, um, Secretary of State, their their primary duty is the elections and making sure that everything runs smoothly on Election Day and all that stuff. But the Secretary of State's office is just not that, correct? It's, it's a ro- wide range of other duties at the Capitol, just not watching the election cycles. And to, to educate our audience a little bit, what is the other duties of the Secretary of State besides election duties? Well, a well, simple thing: if you were, if, if anyone's gotten married here lately, they've had to go get their marriage license. Uh, but uh, one of the things that a lot of people don't understand is uh, all of our uh, corporations that have to file corporate papers. Uh, that's that's a big part of uh, what what the Secretary of State's office does. Is, it's just keeping up with all of the licenses, all of the filings of new corporations. And you're dealing with a lot of the attorneys and CPAs that, that uh, do the work of the corporation. I had a, I had a small business and I didn't deal with, deal with them also. Would, and let me go back to, uh, the secretary of state is the chief elections officer, but he does not carry out the elections. The, le- the elections are carried out locally in each in each uh, parish, each priest precinct. Those are the folks who are, who are really the ones who uh, get the work done, and with just with the help but in the guidance of the Secretary of State to uh, make the final say, gather the final numbers, and, and turn the turn the numbers into the public. Yeah, it, it mimics the national scale where the states. Um, the states select their candidate for president or whatnot, and they just the the federal government ain't don't have control over the elections. It is the low is the low is the states, and then it goes to the results of the national election. Same thing with us as we we go ahead and our local clerk of court holds the uh, the election. They send them to your office, and you get the numbers and let us know who won and who lost. Right. It's, uh, let's say how to put that simple. It's, if you want to think about, you, we hear sometimes state rights or local rights or government begins at home. Uh, you know, the local school board controls, you know, the local, uh, schools, uh, in Louisiana. And I gotta think this is right in, in all states. The, uh, the secretary of state doesn't make the law or the rules we go by. That is, any law change we have is going to have to uh, be decided by the uh, the state legislature. They'll uh, they'll pass the law and, and enact it. So, in order to uh, do something new like uh, help the elderly, uh, that's going to come. The first ideas are going to come from uh, your hometown precincts and court clerks of court and registrars to come up with better ideas. Once those ideas are formulated, and that's where I'll come in as a leader. To listen to the people, try to design design new laws that will help people like the uh, the elderly. That will bring that in front of the legislature, and the legislature will vote and pass a law that will make it easier for uh, for the elderly. Uh, one of the things that I've always felt like uh, we had a the, the hours of that we take to uh, do the elections. I've always felt like we could probably shrink those that time. By just a short amount, maybe a knock off an hour, and it makes it so much easier on all the people who work to get out the vote. Uh, I think I'd like to see us have a debate on maybe shorten the uh, election day, maybe by an hour. You know? Do you do you see us if we short an hour? Cause I think right now we do, I think we go till eight o'clock at night or so Central Standard Time, and we. You know, if we shut that down by an hour, do you possibly see us extending the early voting um, for 
for the upcoming elections? Because uh, I think right now we have two weeks of early voting here in the state of Louisiana. Do you see us extending that a, a week because we take away an hour? No, I, I really don't see the, the, the comparison in the two. Uh, I've, uh, my wife and I vote early. We really like doing that. We've done it for most of our uh, most of our lives since I've had it. And we have had some modest changes in the way we do the early voting. So uh, as a leader of the of the system, I want, I want to have an open policy and, and get, listen to some ideas about how to make it better and more convenient and get more people to vote. Uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm up for some, some change in those, those areas, but I think it's going to come from the people. Uh, if we, if we shrink the voting day by one hour, uh, let's listen to how many people are going to complain. It's a, it's a committee. And, uh, just to see if, uh, if the if the mass of people agree that we could we could shorten it and still do it well, I know all those people that work at the polls would wouldn't mind it. Yeah, yeah, it, it would make it a lot easier on them. And uh, the only t- the only reason I would say it would be hard on it, it'd be like the, the the last minute people that or the people that work till you know six thirty seven o'clock, they would have to rush to get to the polls before they were closed. And me, I'm an early voter. I like uh, not early day voting, but like day of election. I like going there right when the polls open up, right before work, if it's six, seven o'clock, and casting my vote before I go to work. And that, that that's just me. I like going on election day. Uh, but a lot of people that that go to work late or they, they have to work till seven, eight o'clock, that might be the only issue you can see us having a, having a problem with that with that extra hour taken away? Well, there's always a, uh, there's a benefit and a, a problem with the, any benefit. And I think it's, uh, we just need to take it as a common sense or approach. Uh, and I look, I ran a business with 500 employees uh, all over the country. And I understand about, you know, changing things and, and making things better. Uh, it's just, uh, I'm going to have an open mind. I'm going to listen to uh, to everyone on any change we make. So I, I'm not proposing any major changes of any kind. In fact, I'm proposing stop this paper ballot. That's my issue. And along with that, uh, let's get everyone in on things and see if we can tweak things up and make it a little better. That, that's it. Do, do you think, and I know Kyle fought for that when he was in office, uh, and this will be the last question for for you, Mr. Mike. Uh, do you see us getting new machines in the near future? Unfortunately, uh, Governor Edwards has stopped every attempt to try to get new machines, um, and a lot of our older machines they're they're, they're finally starting to not want to work right no more. So, do you think with a new governor, hopefully a Republican governor, we can go ahead and you and that new governor could make a deal to where we can get some new machines? in the state of Louisiana, so we are a little bit more efficient on that front? If we get new machines, or if and when, I think we probably will get new machines in the future somewhere. But if we get those machines, it's going to be driven by the people who do the elections. And uh, just talk to the clerks, talk to the registrars, talk to those people who work at the polls. And uh, that's where you'll find the answer of, when we need to get to machines and what kind of machines would they recommend we use? So that's where the answer is to this problem. It's, it's out there in the grassroots where the people who get to do the vote, not in Baton Rouge, in the Capitol, or at the, the highly minded politicians. So uh, the folks are going to make that decision. So I'm going to lead them away in the way. Sounds good, Mr. Mike. Mr. Mike, before you roll off, uh, go ahead and tell people where they can find your campaign uh, pages and if they have any questions for you, where they can reach out to you on and, uh, and how, um, how, you know, what, what would you tell a voter that is undecided about you, uh, voting for you in the next election? I'm running on my experience of, uh, I had a small business. I created 500 jobs. I, I drove the first 18 wheeler. Uh, when I sold a business, I had over 200. Uh, I know how to uh, work people and lead, uh, I put God and country first. I've served uh, as a chairman of the Republican Party for six years, from 94 to 2000. 
one of the greatest growth areas of our time. I've served as public service commissioner for uh, one six-year term. I was I was chairman of the commission for two years, and now I've been reelected uh, with sixty percent of the vote over seventeen parishes. People know I know how to get things done and lead, and uh, they and they trust me. And I think that's the kind of a uh, person we need at Secretary of State's job. And uh, I would just humbly ask everyone to uh, vote for me in in October. And uh, if you can reach me at uh, on the web, it's uh, friendsofmikefrancis.com, friendsofmikefrancis.com. Mr. Mike, thank you for coming on, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna schedule a little, a little bit closer to the election and uh, get you back on to see how the campaign's going, and uh, just to you know visit with you a little while. I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind visiting with this Cajun conservative right here. No, I'm I'm totally support you and what you do. Thank you for getting the word out to the public, and and uh, if you have any questions, let me call your station, and you can get a hold of me. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. With that being said, that was Mr. Mike Francis. He is running for the Louisiana Secretary of State. Again, if you have any questions for Mr. Mike, you can go ahead and contact us here at the Cajun Conservative Studios at the Cajun Conservative 5 at gmail.com. Just email me and I'll get them uh, questions to Mr. Mike. Uh, with that being said, uh, remember that Jesus Christ is king and he's coming back and he's coming back soon. So don't be faint of heart because Jesus has overcome the world. If you want to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please reach out to me at uh, the cage Conservative 5 at gmail.com and we will tell you how to make Jesus your Savior and heaven your home. So until next time on the next episode, please be safe, please be encouraged and make let the Lord bless you continually. You have a good one. And here.